Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a first impressions video of Ubuntu Mate 16.10, the second and final beta before its release on October 13th of this year. So this review, or this first impressions video rather, is going to be pretty brief and to the point uh, because there isn't too much to say about this distribution. This is the Ubuntu Mate that we all know and love. If you are looking for a distribution that has the support of one of the biggest distributions on the Linux scene at the moment, but with a traditional desktop paradigm that's a little bit more comfortable to use, something that you might be a little bit more comfortable with than some kind of shiny, gadgety, Unity kind of affair, then Ubuntu Mate might just be the distribution for you. It certainly found a good niche as a secondary alternative to the Ubuntu distribution if for, for people looking for something a little bit, I guess, down to earth, a little bit more traditional, a little bit just, you know, uh, functional. Um, and uh, and I think it is pretty safe to say that uh, that Ubuntu Mate fills that niche pretty well. I've got to say, every time I review a, a version of Ubuntu Mate, I, I'm always um, left with a good feeling about where we are in the uh, in the Linux space with our distributions, and that we have multiple competent distributions that we can be really proud to show off and introduce to new people and this is very much one of them. This is one of the distributions that if someone comes to me and asks what kind of Linux distribution they, they want just to, to launch themselves into Linux, they don't want anything too technical, they just want something that they can install and go, this would be where I'd probably point them. Uh, I possibly would go more for a long-term support release than like a 16.10 release. For those of you that don't know, every two years, Ubuntu and Ubuntu Mate and all the other Ubuntu derivatives, they release uh, what's called a long-term support release, which is re released um, and supported usually for five years, but sometimes only three, um, with the idea that you install this when it comes out and you don't have to touch it, you don't have to bother with it until nearing the end of support, which could be three to five years later on down the line if you want to, or of course you could upgrade when the next long-term support release is available two years down the line. So if you don't want to upgrade too often or you know if you want to limit the amount of downloading that you're doing but you don't mind slightly older software uh, then the long-term support release might be a choice for you whereas if you're looking for slightly more up-to-date software um, and some some more sort of cutting-edge themes and features and all that kind of stuff then Ubuntu Mate 1610 might be um, might be right up your street. So you can look at the press release yourselves, it's on the Ubuntu Mate blog for the upgrades. They're mostly just version upgrades for all the parts that, it ma that, that, that make it up. There are a few known issues, but they're all with the Ubuntu family. The, the, there don't seem to be any Mate-specific issues. Um, but yeah, this is the, the Ubuntu Mate that we all know and love. This is, this is a solid you know, incremental release, as was expected. Um, even though this is the second beta, uh, I've not come across any errors. This looks like a fantastic out-of-the-box experience. This is the Ubuntu Mate welcome screen. This is, uh, I mean, Ubuntu Mate has, has become known for this uh, welcome screen, for it being particularly good. I'm surprised other distributions aren't including it because we often look at distributions through our own eyes and not through the eyes of someone who might be picking up a Linux distribution for the first time. And with Linux, there's a different way of installing and running software, um, as well as different ways of doing a whole lot of things. And then it's not necessarily more difficult or, or more easy, it's just different. And having a nice welcome screen with um, documentation and links to support and um, new software, that's really what, uh, what people who are new into the software they want to you know this is this is a good first port of call because those are the kind of things that you need to know and 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 then some so i'm going to instead of going through all these features because they are pretty much what you'd expect i'm just going to go to the software boutique now the software boutique is really a good piece of software again one that i think should be included with more distributions because they curate uh, ubuntu has vast amounts of software in its repositories too much for new users or users that use just sort of well-known pieces of software and it does make sense to just curate some of the most polished pieces of software and put them into a software boutique so here you've got um, accessories and you've got um, you don't have a massive amount of problems uh, programs but you do have enough that cover each area of your workflow so for example you've got key pass x for your password manager um, redshift if you want to adjust the coloring on your screen so you don't get too much um, bright white light too late at night. Uh, VeraCrypt, um, so on the fly encrypted volumes. Um, 
And then, of course, you've got a full choice of browsers, including Google Chrome, uh, which is at the moment the only Netflix supported browser on Linux. That being said, though, uh, Firefox for version 49 should be able to play Netflix, Netflix as well. But um, since it's not out yet, don't hold me to it. So we have Office as well. We have all the Office tools and programming, sound and video. Uh, they have chosen uh, Pitavi as their video editor, and it's the I think it's the only video editor they've included here, which is a shame. I mean, Pitavi last when I first tried it, it wasn't that great. It was very unstable. Most video editors are unstable on Linux. I am a Caden Live person myself, and I would really quite like to have seen that in there as well. And maybe OpenShot, maybe maybe one for the future. But one video editor, even though I, I mean video editing is certainly one of the areas where Linux falls far behind uh, both Windows and Mac. It's catching up, but um, it's still got some way to go. So, uh, so, so it, it, it's, it's understandable that they only include one video editor that they feel you know, they want to support or that they want to uh, push for. Bleach bit um, is also a good bit of kit if you just want to clear out all the old um, cache files um, and, and all the old muck that your software builds up from time to time. This is actually uh, is claim, Bleach bit's claim to fame is that it is Edward Snowden approved. And then you've got Brazero, Deja, Dupe, P Sensor, Term Terminator is pretty good, Virtual Machine Manager, all that kind of stuff. And fix. Oh, there's some. There's fixes here as well. Oh, that's really good. That is a really good. I I did not notice that. So you got more. You got more software here. So th uh, this allows you just to install the software centers, which is fine. Outdated. Pa wow, that's really good. It would be great if there was like a boutique window, a software boutique sort of window like this on all distributions, where if there's a known bug and a known fix that it's put into a script and then just put on this on on a in a repository that's that would be a really good way of community fixing bugs that the bugs can actually then be deployed through a script i'd love to do that i'd write scripts for it if they if they had that um and then everything else i can show you the software that comes with it it comes with oh uh, another interesting thing i will show you the look and feel about the mate tweak tool now this is um, this just tweaks the desktop, so you can choose what um, desktop desktop icons you can show. There's some interface things, icons. So you can use the Mate tweak tool here to basically just adjust your overall desktop to any any number of the desktop paradigms. Uh, Redmond here, of course, is a very Windows esque uh, look, which tends to be something that I often go for as well. You've also got the net book look here which is just at the top and then you've got uh, like the gnome 2 or the cupertino or ubuntu mate traditional and then you've got a few other changes there so overall a really really good release from ubuntu mate for me the big deciding thing about this release is whether or not ubuntu can fix that wi-fi bug i know that it's been fixed on some cards but i still uh, administer some computers that do not get wi-fi on any ubuntu um 1604 installation which is really bad and i as i understand it it's a versioning miss mis it's like a bug with versioning mismatching um which, to be honest, really should be no excuse, but um, but is a really big disappointment for this version of Ubuntu. Uh, so I'm hoping with uh, 16.10, they've completely nipped that in the bud, and then they've got a decent, solid Ubuntu Mate, uh, which can then sort of carry on till the till the next release. As the name implies, uh, the long-term support releases are supported uh, for a lot longer than these incremental releases, um, which is a shame because if they fix that problem, then this would make almost just as good of a long-term support release. Um, but that being said, yeah, if they can nip that Wi-Fi thing in the bud with this release, I think that this will be the strongest uh, Ubuntu 
yet and this will be the strongest Ubuntu Mate yet. So that's about it from me today with today's video. Um, feel free to check out my Twitch channel twitch.tv forward slash chrisware. Link of course will be in the description um, but I'm hoping to do a lot more streaming in the near future now that winter's just around the corner and uh, you know the sort of the nights are drawing in. It's time for indoor activities. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And um, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.